What up folks, Alex here, Mr. Alex Tech, and I've finally gotten around to updating my free seamless transitions pack for DaVinci Resolve 17. Hooray! Now this pack is designed specifically for DaVinci Resolve 17, so it won't work on any of the older versions. If you're still running a previous version of DaVinci Resolve, the old packs are still available, they still work, so you can download those for free by clicking on the link down in the description below. But this new pack is really cool, really awesome, I'm dead chuffed with it, because not only will it work on any frame rate, any resolution, and is completely scalable, as were the old ones, this time around they're also completely customizable. So rather than having 40 odd different transitions, this time around there are just four. We've got a whip, a diagonal whip, a zoom, and a spin. You can just add the transition to your timeline and then customize all of the elements to get it looking exactly as you want it. And then you can save those customizations as a transition preset, so then you can build up your own really awesome little personal collection of transitions that are unique to you. Really, really cool. Now, as always, this transitions pack is free. However, I do, of course, rely on your donations to be able to keep doing free packs like this. So if you can, please do consider donating, even if it's one, two, three dollars, whatever, so that I can continue making free resources for you guys. Right, enough of all that, let's crack on with the video. First up, I'm gonna show you how to download them, how to install them, how to run and use all of the different transitions, and then also how to create your own presets. Oh, and one last thing, don't forget that you can actually use transitions on titles as well. So all the titles within this video were actually animated using these four transitions. All you need to do is drop the transition onto the title on the timeline and job done. Right, let's crack open DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what's what. First up, to download the transitions, shoot over to the link down in the description below to take you to the Mr. Alex Tech Extras Buy Me A Coffee page. Scroll down the list until you see the ultimate seamless transitions and click on Get This. Then enter your name and your email and put the price you wish to pay within the box here. Once you're done, you've got the option to hit Download, so give that a click and it will download the transition files for you. Now the transitions will be downloaded as a .zip file, so all you need to do is unpack that. You can either right click if you're on Windows and then just go to Extract All. If you're on Mac, all you need to do is double click and it should create a new folder with the .settings files within. Now they've actually changed how to import these in DaVinci Resolve 17, they made it much easier. So next up, all you need to do, open up DaVinci Resolve, I've got it here. Jump directly into the Fusion page. Open up the Effects Library. Expand where it says Edit Templates on the left, and then click on Transitions. And then keeping DaVinci Resolve open, we're going to open up our other window with our dot .settings files. We're just going to highlight these four, drag them across, and release them here. And it should then install the transitions into your DaVinci Resolve. Give it a second to refresh, and then if you just go to the same place, Edit Templates, Transitions, scroll down, you should now see the Mr. AT Ultimate Transitions. If you don't, if that doesn't work for whatever reason, all you can do, click on these three little dots at the top here and then click on Show Folder. That'll open up the Transitions folder. Those dot settings files won't be there, so what we need to then do is copy them into here, close this down, and then they should appear within that list. And then to use the transitions, here we are on the Edit tab. I've got some files set up on my timeline. We're going to open up the Effects Library. We're going to come down to the video transitions. We're going to scroll right the way down until we see this fusion transitions area. Keep going down until you see the Mr. 80 ultimate transitions. We've got a diagonal whip, a spin, a standard whip, and then a zoom. So I'm going to show you how these work. If I grab the ultimate zoom and just drag it onto this edit point here and release, we can just hit play to have a look and we've got a simple zoom through transition. Give the transition a click, open up the inspector in the top right hand corner, make sure you're on the transitions tab, and then there's a bunch of controls for this transition within here. Click on the Mr. Alex Tech button to make sure you're subscribed to the Mr. Alex Tech channel. And if you want to donate any coffees at any point, you can click on the donate here button. In the middle, we've got a few options. So we've got the pivot point. If I just move my playhead right into the center of this transition, you can see we're zooming right into the middle. If I move the pivot, we can choose where we zoom into. So if I don't want to zoom into the middle, I want to zoom in over to the right, I can move the x-axis, we zoom in over here instead. And then we've got the zoom type. So we've got in, 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 out, 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 and then out, in. 
So you can just choose the style of zoom that we want. So if I go to in out, it's going to zoom in for the first half and then out for the second, giving us a sort of bounce effect like so. The scale controls how much you zoom in. So you can knock that down if you want a subtle zoom or increase that if you want more. And then we've got the quality and the shutter angle. These appear on all of the different transitions. Quality is the quality of the motion blur. So you can see it's a little bit janky here. I've set it to two as default because then these transitions are a little bit easier to run. Once you've configured everything, you can just knock that up to get it looking a little bit nicer. The shutter angle controls how much blur and the quality controls the quality of that blur. Underneath that, you've got an in and out. These control the acceleration curve within the transition itself. So if we just hit play, it looks like that. And we can change this. So if we change it to back, for example, and bounce, that will give us a totally different look because it will bounce out at the beginning of the transition like so. So feel free, customize those, play with them as much as you wish. And then we've got the whip transition. So we can choose the direction. By default, it will go to the right, but we can choose between up, left, and down as well. And then we've got the scale. So by default, it will just go one across, but if you want more of a film roll style look, if we increase that to three and then hit play, that'll just roll over three times instead. And then we've got the quality and the shutter angle again. Again, I've set it by two, so it's a bit easier to run. And once you're happy, you can just increase that to get it looking a little bit nicer. We've got ins and outs once again, and on this one, we've also got zoom. So rather than just doing a simple whip, we can also zoom in throughout the transition. So if I just increase the zoom, hit play, it's gonna zoom in and whip across like so. And then we've got the spin transition. Same again, we've got the pivot, so we can choose the points that we're rotating around. We can choose the number of times that it spins. So if I hit play, by default, we'll do 360 degrees. If we increase that to two, we've got 720, three, all the way up to six. So we can have a massive spin like so. If you want to go in the opposite direction, so by default, it will rotate in counterclockwise. Just drag this down to be negative numbers and it'll rotate in the opposite direction. Again, quality and shutter angle, in and out and zoom. And last but not least, we've got the diagonal whip, very similar to the original whip, but obviously this time we've got up right, up left, down left, and down right. So if we do up left and then hit play, we've got an up left whip style transition. And again, we've got all of the same controls we had before. Now, once you've made changes to a transition, you can actually save those as a transition preset. So I'm gonna grab my ultimate spin here, put this on my timeline, we'll give it a click, now let's just make some changes. So let's say I wanna spin from the top left hand corner rather than in the middle. We'll move my pivot. We wanna do two spins. We'll increase the motion blur so it looks a little bit better. And we're gonna change our in and out to, let's just go with back and we'll see how that looks. So I've made some changes. I've got a custom preset for this transition that I'm happy with. If we just hit play, it looks something like that, which looks pretty cool. So we're gonna right click on the transition, on the timeline, and we're gonna create a transition preset. We can then give that a name. So I'm just gonna call this one back and then click on okay. Then we can just delete that from the timeline. And if we scroll up, still within the effects library and the video transitions area, scroll up until you see the user area. Now within there, you should see your Mr. AT ultimate spin back transition. We can then grab that, put that on our timeline, and it will remember all of the settings that we had before. So you can see my pivot, spin, in and out, and everything else. So then if we just hit play, we've got this transition ready to go. So you can use these four transitions to create whatever transitions you want. Now, one last quick tip while we're in DaVinci Resolve, if your transition is struggling to run, what I recommend, go to playback, render cache, and make sure that your render cache is set to smart. Once you add the transition onto your timeline, like so, you'll see this red bar appear on the timeline. That means that it's not yet been rendered. If you wait for that to turn blue, once it's turned blue, I can hit play, and the transition will play back smoothly, like so. 
And that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big fat thumbs up. If you've got any thoughts or feedback, slap them down into the comment section below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this, you want to see more stuff, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Thanks for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.